meningococcal disease is a worry for all parents uh, and for all doctors looking after children. However, many doctors don't have a very clear idea of just how big the risk is of getting meningococcal disease. And in this talk, I was starting by explaining just what the probabilities are. Some people think that getting meningococcal disease is so unlikely that it's the same as winning the lottery. On the other hand, some people think that it's really quite common and quite easily, uh, uh, easily occurs. The reality is that the chances in a whole lifetime of getting meningococcal disease are around about one in a thousand. That's not incredibly common, but it's also not incredibly rare either. either. And so for that reason, paediatricians may want to counsel parents on whether or not it's important to have their children immunized. The other main point of my talk is that the way that meningococcal vaccines work is by interrupting transmission of meningococcus. It's not so much that you immunize a child and stop that child from getting sick. It's more that you immunize a population and stop the organisms that cause meningitis from being passed around. For that reason, you need to identify the people within the population that are most likely to cause transmission. And in the case of meningococcus, that is actually teenagers. The rates of carriage in teenagers are much higher than in younger children, even though the rates of disease are much higher in younger children than in teenagers. For that reason, the strategies taken towards immunizing against meningococcus, increasingly in Europe, are directed towards teenagers and to prevention of carriage. And we are likely to see more and more countries adopting adolescent booster doses of vaccines to, to get this effect to occur.